This video is brought to you by me on Learn Light and Sound, where we have courses online on how to improve your lighting and sound for video, link down below. This entire episode is recorded with the Zoom H6 Studio and the Sennheiser MKH50 boom microphone, which is boomed out of the frame right here. Uh, there are a few samples that we're going to play in just a moment here. In fact, let's go ahead and play those now, where we use different microphones will indicate which ones we use. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Now, for those who have already watched my Zoom H5 Studio review, I wanna say this, just to make things very simple for you. The H6 Studio uses, it, it appears, the exact same microphones, first of all, but also the same preamplifiers. They are the Zoom F-Series preamplifiers, very high quality, low noise. So if that's all you needed to know, to make a buying decision, by all means, <laughs> use our affiliate link down below. All right, let me get into, obviously there's some differences too. You have four inputs. So if you're going to be using four phantom powered microphones, this uses the same number of batteries, four AA batteries. So it will not power for as long as the Zoom H5 Studio, only powering two mics would. So that's kind of common sense. I don't think anyone's surprised by that. So just keep that in mind. Just for comparison, here are the specs of the Zoom H5 Studio and the H6 Studio. Again, they're pretty much identical aside from the number of inputs, battery power time, and the number of simultaneous record track counts. So obviously there are more tracks you can record on the H6 Studio. Let's get you some audio samples of RF interference and handling noise. Handling noise. Recording with the built-in microphone here. If I just hold it like this, it's fine. If I push a button, oh, you can hear if I move my hand. Pushing, but pushing buttons there. Uh, operating the menu. Adjusting the gain dial. I think it's fair to say it's better to think of this as a handy recorder, meaning useful in a lot of situations, not necessarily as a handheld recorder, unless you're very careful to set everything up ahead of time, press record, and then just hold it, not adjust any settings. Also outdoors, you're gonna need the accessory kit with the fur cover. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of wind distortion that sounds something like this. When you put radio frequency emanate, um, emitting devices near, this one's a UHF wireless microphone transmitter at 550 megahertz. And then, of course, we have my phone streaming over Wi-Fi, so 2.4 gigahertz gigahertz. You can hear my stomach more than you can hear any sort of digital interference from this. So that's good. The H6 Studio and the H5 Studio appear to be very nicely shielded, so you should not get radio frequency interference from radio frequency devices. To test the self-noise generated by the XLR combo inputs on the H6 Studio, we used a dummy XLR connector with a 150 ohm resistor across pins two and three. We set the gain to plus 60 dB, and that came out to minus 69 dB RMS max. That's like a worst case scenario. In other words, if none of that made sense to you, what this means is these are very clean preamplifiers. You're not going to need to worry about the preamplifiers making a bunch of hiss and noise. You need to be more concerned about your microphone choice and how much ambient noise you have in the space where you're recording. 
So really, really good performance here by the H6 Studio and the H5 Studio. Let me run through the pros and cons here really quickly. First of all, this is a eight track recorder. It records four XLR combo inputs, one 3.5 millimeter stereo input, and the stereo mics that are built in all at the same time, plus a stereo mix of all of those microphones. It is, of course, a 32-bit float recorder with dual analog to digital converters per input, including the built-in microphones and the 3.5 millimeter microphone input, which was not the case on the Zoom Essential series. So this is a higher quality recorder. I would say, I hesitate to use this term, but it's actually like a, a it's a quality 32-bit float implementation. Let's just say that. <laughs> if 32-bit float is important to you, this recorder performs well. You can also switch it to 16 or 24-bit if you prefer, but it looks like it's recording in 32-bit float and then just placing that recording in a 24-bit container. So, uh, and you can also normalize it if you want to export that way as well. All right, the XY stereo mics have a dynamic range of 123 decibels compared to the original Zoom H6, which had a dynamic range of 65 decibels, almost. <laughs> the new one has almost twice the dynamic range. Pretty amazing. Uh, max sound pressure level that these mics can handle is 140 decibels SPL, which again is good for recording really loud things. So if you want to go record a loud concert and you can't get a feed from the board, you're just going to use the built-in microphones, you should be just fine. So I would say these are probably the best sounding microphones on a handy style recorder that I've used. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Same with the H5 Studio, but better than any of the previous Zoom H series, and I think better than the Tascam Porta Capture series as well. The Tascam Porta Capture series actually sound good, but they're noisy. So that's the big difference there. We'll talk more about the Porta Capture in just a minute. The device does appear to be RF shielded, as we saw in the previous test. There are digital look-ahead limiters, so if you do want to have limiters that are preventing things from getting above zero dB, for example, if you're doing live sound, you have that as well. It is using the Mic Capsule 3.0 system. So this is a pro and a con. These new microphones and the Mic Capsules and the other modules you can put on here are capable of 32-bit float, whereas the previous ones were not, and they also have better microphones. So that's uh, kind of a pro and a con. So they couldn't keep using the old system and achieve what they've achieved with these new modules. The H6 Studio also has the accessibility voiceover menu system for the visually impaired, which I think is a really nice step forward. The color screen is great. It's the same exact one that you see on the Zoom H5 Studio, easy to see even for less than perfect eyes like my own. Outdoors, yeah, it's a little bit more challenging to see, but you can usually get by. Battery power time, we did our own test to compare just to see how that lines up with what Zoom was recording in their specs. We connected the Rode NT1 fifth generation, turned on phantom power, just one microphone input, and we were able to power this with four AA IKEA Lada 2450 milliamp hour batteries for eight hours and 31 minutes. The things that is awesome about the Zoom Handy Recorders is that they are the, probably the most power efficient recorders, Handy Recorders out there. I, Zoom always does a fantastic job on that. What they don't do a fantastic job on is the battery covers. You can also power the unit via USB-C, so that is, uh, that'll extend your time if you need really long recording times. It records to micro SD, HC, and XC cards up to two terabytes. You can operate the H6 Studio as an audio interface connected to your computer if you choose. It will record six inputs and it will take two outputs from the host, the computer as well, up to 96 kilohertz. The only caveat is if you're also recording on the H6 at the same time that you are sending audio to the computer, you can only go up to 48 kilohertz. And you can do any of this at 24-bit or 32-bit float. So. It works nicely as an audio interface as well. It has a 3.5 millimeter line output to send audio to your camera, and it does have an output limiter so that you don't overload the inputs of your, mi of your microphone input on your camera, which is good. It has an onboard speaker, so if you just need to make sure that you got a recording, or if you want to hear the voiceover walking through the menus, you can do that there. There is a port for the BTA1 or TCA1 modules. This allows you to control 
the H6 Studio via an iOS app. It is iOS only as far as I can tell so far. And the app is very limited. Pretty much all it does is it allows you to start and stop recordings, or if you have the TCA one instead of the BTA one, this is a new module that isn't out yet. We're in September 2025. It's supposed to come out before the end of the year. But that TCA one not only allows you to connect to the iOS app to start and stop recordings, but it also allows you to generate time code and to sync wirelessly with wirelessly capable time code generators like the Atomos UltraSync Blue. The H6 Studio is priced at $400 US and the BTA one is $49 US. So I don't know what the TCA one is gonna be priced at. A few cons, number one, plug-in power for the 3.5 millimeter input jack is 2.5 volts. So I don't know if that's a problem or not just telling you because some pro quality lavalier microphones that people like to use on these actually require, at least in their specifications, more voltage. So for example, the Sankenkos 11D requires five volts. Will you damage it over time if you use it? I don't know. I'm not going to stick mine in there and leave it plugged in and see. I care about my microphone. So just be aware of that. That's the thing that, that Zoom does. And this is an example of how they are being very careful about power management and powering time, making these devices as efficient as possible. I think that's why they do that. As I mentioned before, the previous microphone capsules are not compatible with the H6 Studio and the H5 Studio. You have to use the version 3.0 capsules. Again, that's a pro and a con because they get better performance out of these. As we saw in the handling sample, the, the handling of the unit, there's plenty of handling noise. So you need to know that. The headphone output is only 20 milliwatts, so you need to use low impedance headphones, preferably 50 ohm or less. I'd probably recommend 30 ohm or less if you can. And then there is no auto mix for podcast or discussion panels. If you want auto mix, then you need to go up to the Zoom F6 or the Zoom F8M Pro or over to the Sound Devices Mix Pre for that. Now, what does that even mean? If you're recording a multi-person podcast and you have multiple microphones connected to the recorder, auto mix is incredibly helpful to make it so you don't have to do nearly as much work in post-processing. The reason for that is that when I talk, my voice is captured by my microphone, but also by the other people's microphone in the same room. And so to clean that up in post, it's a lot of work, especially if you have a long form podcast that lasts, I don't know, an hour or even 30 minutes, you have to do a lot of post-production work. Auto mix makes that much easier. It does it for you. So when I'm talking into my mic, it actually pulls the levels on the mics of the other people down so that it's not also picking up my, my sound, my voice. And that makes for a much better sounding podcast. All right, how does the H6 Studio compare to the Tascam Porta Capture X8? Very similar recorders. They're both the same price in September, 2025. That is $400 US. I would say that the Tascam built-in microphones are much noisier. And as far as I know, Tascam hasn't made any other microphones for their X8 or X6 recorders, whereas Zoom has a variety of different options. They have, of course, the included XY stereo microphones. They also have a module that allows you to add two additional XLR combo inputs. They have a stereo shotgun mic, and soon they're supposed to have a two-channel wireless kit as well. So that puts the, that gives sort of the advantage to the Zoom H6 Studio. I will say this, I prefer the warmer sound of the XLR inputs on the Porta Capture, but you can easily EQ the inputs or the recordings from the H6 Studio or the H5 Studio to make them sound very similar. They're pretty close, but just like directly out of the recorder, the Tascam sounds a little bit warmer. So the Taz, Tascam probably is not as flat a frequency <laughs> response. Uh, as the H6 Studio is, but it directly out of the recorder to me it sounded better, on my voice at least. There is a much larger screen with touch capabilities on the Tascam Porta Capture X8, but the trade-off to that is that the battery life is much worse on the Porta Capture X8, so there's kind of a trade-off there as well. So that's my look at the Zoom H6 Studio. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. Oh, by the way, this is on loan from b and I am going to return it as soon as I'm done with the review here. I need to get it back to them. 
So I don't have it on hand. I can't answer all questions by doing various tests beyond this, but if you do have a question, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer that. Again, I don't have this on hand. I don't own this. I have to send it back to B&H, so I'll do my best to answer. In the meantime, get out there and make some great recordings. I'll talk to you again soon.